Hello guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, we will discuss potential ways that we could efficiently farm stars. The mechanism for forming stars is pretty simple. A massive volume of gas builds up enough mass that gravity causes it to collapse. In nature, stars form rarely. Normally, interstellar space averages one atom every cubic centimeter. So, for a star the size of the Sun to form, a sphere of hydrogen atoms with a radius of 65 light years is required. That is around 2 billion times the radius of the Sun. However, the density of interstellar gas is nowhere near enough for the gas to collapse. For the star to begin forming, some force must trigger the gas to collapse. In nature, the only force strong enough to cause this is a supernova or a black hole shockwave, which happens relatively rarely. So in order for a star to form naturally, a massive sphere of gas has to be in the right place to get compressed by a shockwave, which is already rare. To solve this issue, we can create stars artificially. In order to farm stars ourselves, we need to recreate the situation. Note that it is impossible to create anything without destroying something else. So, this star farm could not go on forever. Firstly, we would need a large amount of hydrogen gas. This would only be realistic to obtain from nebula clouds, since the only other way to obtain large amounts of gas is to kill another star. This makes it so the farm would be more of like a tool to speed up star formation in nebulas than an actual self-sufficient farm. Secondly, we will need a way to create large shock waves in a predictable and timely manner. One way to do this is to cause two black holes to go in a helical orbit. The black holes would then emit gravitational waves strong enough to most likely trigger the gas to collapse. What makes it even more difficult is that the black holes have to be placed far away in order to avoid the stars from going into orbit and eventually getting sucked in. And plus, orbiting black holes would eventually collide and form a stronger black hole that would suck any stars in even faster. So, we could use a spinning neutron star, which would be much easier to control than two orbiting black holes. If the surface of a neutron star is uneven, then with each rotation of the mass, the uneven bump would displace space-time and create gravitational waves. Usually, these bumps are only a few centimeters tall, but still create waves strong enough for us to sense. However, these bumps would inevitably smooth out due to the gravity of the star. So, we can optimize this by creating a neutron star with a bump as large as possible. The bump still wouldn't last very long, but it would be long enough for our needs. Also, creating such a neutron star with the perfect bump would be very difficult, and require a video of its own. So, I will make a video on it in the future. Anyways, with a spinning neutron star, we could get a shock wave to occur at regular and short intervals. However, the waves would emanate in all directions, making it difficult to control where our stars form. So, we could place this neutron star so that the hydrogen gas is only in one direction compared to the neutron star. This would create a lot more energy wasted, but at least the shock waves would only make contact with gas in a small area and stars would form in a more controllable way. And yeah, that is it for this video. See you next time, and bye.